Today, some more official news dropped for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Three new Pokemon were revealed, as well as some cool information about the game. Let's jump right into the new Pokemon. Cloth is probably one of the more exciting ones. No, it's not. But it's still really cool, okay? It's still really cool. It actually has a really cool ability. So it's a pure rock type, and it is a crab, obviously. Now, it has the ability Anger Shell and Shell Armor. We know what Shell Armor does. It prevents you from being crit. But what does Anger Shell do? We'll find out in a second. And also, if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure you let me know. Leave a like. And also, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'm over to 300k. That's my end of the year goal. If you do enjoy it, you know, you can help me get there. Upload Pokemon every single day. Spinning eyes that leave no blind spots. Cloth can... I love its name. Cloth. It's because obviously it's claw and then half at the end. But can roll... Oh yeah, I'm really good. I'm, I'm really observant. <laughs> Protruding eyeballs to see everything around it, eliminating all blind spots. It latches upside down onto cliffs to ambush its prey from above. However, Cloth eventually gets dizzy from the blood rushing to its head, so it can't stay upside down too long. Claws are both strong dexterous. Cloths... Uh, claws can hold onto things very tightly, not letting prey go once it's in its grasp. It uses one claw to hold its opponent, even if claw loses its claw, blah, blah, blah. This stuff doesn't really, I mean, it's cool lore, but it doesn't really matter. This is the cool part. This is a really, 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 really cool part. So Shell, uh, its Anger Shell ability is really cool. And I, I they need a buff Defeatus. You can't just give me this ability, and then we have Defeatus. Um, so, Anger Shell. Uh, basically, when Claw's HP drops to half or less, the Pokemon gets angry. This lowers its defense and special defense stat, but boosts attack, special attack, and speed stat. What does that sound like? That sounds just like Shell Smash. So basically, when this Pokemon HP drops to half or less, and uh, I'm assuming it, it it's not like Berserk, where Berserk has to be activated by the opponent, but it looks like it just says when it drops to half or less, the Pokemon gets angry and it gets a Shell Smash boost. However, it does say uh, special attack rose, speed rose, and attack rose. It does not say sharply rose, which means that it's slightly different than Shell Smash. Shell Smash is obviously minus defenses, and then you get plus two attack, special attack, and speed. This seems to be plus one attack, special attack, and speed. You know, it is a rock type. It's also a crab. Uh, historically, the crab Pokemon are not the fastest, but they're also not the slowest, too. Kingler has 273 speed with a Jolly Max nature, so that's not absolutely terrible, right? Crawdon is in that family of sorts, and Crawdon's around the 229 speed stat. Uh, and then we do have Crabonable, uh, so they kind of just start to even up. Crabonable was really slow, but then again, it came out in Generation 7 where every Pokemon was slow. Overall, this is a really cool ability. I like it. It's a pure rock type, which means doesn't have any two times weaknesses, but does have the common weakness to ground types. Uh, but I think that's not going to matter as much, in my opinion, because it is a crab. I expect it to get Crab Hammer. That's literally my thought process. All the other crabs get crab hammer. I expect this thing to get crab hammer. Though I, I guess uh, the exception would be Crustle, which is a hermit crab, right? And it doesn't get crab hammer. But this one, I expect to get crab hammer. I really do. Which I think would be really good in its arsenal, right? Because if you have your... Let's say this thing already learned Shell Smash, which I also think it might just naturally learn Shell Smash, especially based on its Anger Shell ability. Shell Smash plus Anger Shell plus Focus Sash, by the way? Sounds crazy, right? Like, this is something I'm thinking about because... You guys, if you've ever played Rambaz of Pokemon Showdown, you've probably used Crustal, or maybe you used it in different things. I'm not talking about Pokemon Unite Crustal. This one does a little bit different. Uh, so, in random battles, Crustal has Sturdy and has Shell Smash and has Heavy Duty Boots. So, it's basically guaranteed, it's like a Focus Sash, right? So, it's basically guaranteed to get a Shell Smash off. If you put a Focus Sash on this Pokemon, and Sash Shell Smashers are not anything new, right? We've seen it on Cloyster, we've seen it on Poltergeist, um, and Amasar, to name a few, Barbarical. But, you put a Sash on this thing. You shell smash up. Now, typically, look at Crustle when it shell smashes. It's still relatively slow, right? It's still slower than Dragapult after a shell smash. However, this thing, even if it's around Crustle speed, it will be faster because not only do you shell smash after they hit you, right? Um, if you you go under half, which is why you'll have that focus dash, and then you get your, your anger shell as well. So it's essentially plus three speed instead of just plus two, which is really, really cool. And you obviously get, you know, plus three attack, plus... Uh, three special attacks. So that, I think that'd be a really cool strat with this Pokemon. Um, and I also think that its ability is going to make it that it's not going to be slow as balls when it freaking <laughs> shell smashes. So I like it a lot. Rock is a really good offensive typing, especially when you cover that with ground, like rock ground is Edgequake is super good coverage. Uh, again, and on top of that, you don't really need much, right? Stone Edge is really good, though it misses. Earthquake is really good. Expect it's a rock type. Expect it to, you know, have Earthquake or some type of something. Uh, ground type attack 
And then we have uh, potentially Crab Hammer, I think, would be really cool too. And I really like that too because it gives you an accurate move versus, or more accurate move versus Landorus. And also a super effective move versus that too. Also dealing with Balloon Tram without having to go for Stone Edge because everybody knows Stone Edge sucks. Um, also, love this little, you get to see the little uh, thing when its ability activates. I, I like that. I don't think Pokemon has that in this current game. Maybe it does. I haven't played a lot of the in-game in a long time. But I really do like that. Also, for those that want to pick up Pokemon uh, Scarlet, Violet, or anything, if you need anything from Best Buy and you live in the United States, feel free to use my affiliate links. I also have a Target affiliate link down below. Buying literally anything using those links will support me. But of course, if you want to pre-order the game, you might as well support me, right? I mean, you can get the digital, you can get the physical copies. Uh, if you like the channel, that is. But yeah, really, really exciting. I'm, I'm very excited about this Pokemon. However, <laughs> we got some pretty cool... I don't even know if we can call it Pokemon. They look like Mega Man. But to be fair, it's not like it's anything new. We've had Bisharp and stuff like that. But we have two really cool Pokemon. One of them is exclusive to Pokemon Scarlet. The other one is exclusive to Pokemon Violet. Let's talk about Armor Rouge first. Armor Rouge is a fire and psychic type. We've seen that before, like a Delphox. You'll be able to encounter it in Pokemon Scarlet. So I'm assuming this is the, uh, like I said, I'm assuming this is the, um, the mod that's exclusive to that. It has the ability Flash Fire. I like Flash Fire as an ability. Uh, it lets you obviously always come in on Heatran, uh, which is pretty cool. As well as uh, like things like just, I guess you don't matter anything else. That's basically it. Like, Heatran is a big one. Heatran is a big fire type. Blacephalon is obviously another one, but you know, you're weak to Shadow Ball, but that's something to keep in mind. But the Fire Warrior Pokemon, its armor is a source of its psychic powers. Armor Rouge set of armor belong to a distinguished warrior and the source of the energy used for its psychic type moves. It also uses the, so it's, what, it just has a dead warrior's armor that has like the soul. Okay. It also uses the psychic capabilities of armor to control the fire energy within its body and unleash its attack. Has a really cool move, by the way. We're going to get into it in a second. It lives by the principles of a fair fight. Armor Rouge believes in a fair fight and will challenge an opponent head on no matter how much stronger the opponent is. It specializes in using its sturdy armor to bolster its defenses and take down enemies with its high firepower. Now, I was always thinking about like, you know, whenever you have a Pokemon, right? This is not its hidden ability, this is a regular ability. I was like, oh, maybe I get like weak armor or something like that, but no, it just said strong armor, so I doubt we get something like that. Um, but yeah, love the way it looks, really cool. Nice zero. Um, a move Armor Rouge can learn, Armor Cannon. Now this is sick. It is a fire type special close combat. Another one for why special attackers are better than physical. <coughs> I said it first. No, everybody thinks it, but. Armor Cannon is a fire type special move in which Armor Rouge moves both its pal drones uh, to its hands and puts its arms together to form a cannon, allowing it to shoot its armor out as a blazing projectile. Love it. Its own armor out as a blazing projectile. I love it. I love the way it looks. I freaking. I freaking love these freaking, uh, what, what, what is his name, Bakugo? Uh, this is one of the more powerful moves that Armor can learn, uh, but it lowers Armor defense, the special defense stat in exchange for that power. So I'm assuming 120 base power, just like close combat. Awesome. Really, really cool. Um, this is, see, this is the thing, right? Like, even if Blacephalon goes for a fire type attack on top of Fini, right? Like, uh, like a flamethrower, a fire blast, or even overheat, you're doing like 20, 30, 40%, right? But overheat obviously trades that power for the special attack drop after uh and fire blast has power but less accuracy this one i'm assuming is going to be 100 percent accurate for the for the defense drops and fire is really good spammable like very 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 good spammable coverage because even resistances like toxpex for instance toxpex has to think twice about coming in on this pokemon because it's part psychic type i love psychic type uh, coupled with fire obviously tyranitar is a big i'm a sit in your face type of pokemon but you couple it with something i mean it looks like it could get some type of fighting move i'm gonna be honest it looks like a warrior right it's a warrior so i expect some type of fighting move um ideally it's to not make it broken right it, it's a high special attacker decent speed uh average attack and by that i mean you can run something click with like sewer power close combat it might even get close combat you know i, I like to give that to everything with sewer power things like that uh but yeah Psychic plus fire is decent offensive coverage as long as you couple that with fighting. Uh, and just for Tyranitar, it's not like Tyranitar. And that's also just in case like Pursuit and things are there in the game again, which I don't know. I, don't, I feel like they're not going to add back Pursuit. Let me know your thoughts on that though. But love it. Love its design. I love Armor Cannon. Awesome move. And yeah, I expect 
I expect it to be a good offensive threat. Uh, whether it's a higher tier or lower tier, just a choice specs on a strong fire type attack like that, very spammable. Doesn't have to worry about accuracy either, most likely. Awesome. Now, Armor Rouge is pretty cool. But Cerule Edge, or Cerule Edge, I might have said the same thing twice, is super sick. Like, okay, this is amazing. The design is, is, is so cool. I keep freaking my desk. Shut the hell up. The design is so cool. The Fire Blade Pokemon. Fire Ghost. What's with them with Fire Ghost lately? We got this. We got, obviously, we have Blaze and Chandelier. And then we got Sui and Typhlosion. I I like the typing. Don't get me wrong. I love Fire Ghost. I just... This will be the first game where I'm able to use a Sui and Typhlosion in, like, a real Pokemon game. In, like, a real Pokemon battle. That's what I mean. Not a real Pokemon game. Legend of Arceus is a great game in its own right. Uh, but, in like, uh, a setting. Because we already saw we could set up Sui and Pokemon in the game. They showed Zorak or whatnot. Why would we only be able to get that and not, like, Typhlosion? But it just sucks when... You have this and it kind of overshadows it. But then again, higher tiers and lower tiers and, and competitive singles, which is what I play, uh, they, they'll do their, don't, their own different things. Sick design. Honestly, I'm getting Pokemon Scarlet, but I'm going to need somebody to trade me this from their Violet. I'm going to be completely honest. <clears throat> but uh, it's a Flaming Great Swords. It's Flaming Great Swords Absorb Energy. Cerulean dawns on old set of armor steeped in grudges and wields blades made of fire and ghost energy. In battle, these blades transform into great swords to increase the religious power. Cuts from these great swords leave wounds from which life energy will flow. And that's really cool with this new move, Bitter Blade, which we'll look at in a second. Willing to do anything to win. Yo, I feel that, bro. Cerulean refers close uh, quarters combat and isn't above using tactics such as sneak attacks and surprise attacks to win a battle. Like that, just them saying sneak attacks already makes me think they'll have Shadow Sneak, right? It already looks like a Gallade esque Pokemon, right? Just way cooler. <laughs> just. I'm sorry, Gallade is a sick Pokemon, right? But this would just look like imagine Mega Gallade looked like this. Maybe, maybe not the same colors, but like just like a flint, like sick. So I'm assuming this thing will get something like Swords Dance and Shadow Sneak, which I think is really cool. Uh, it would need a good physical fire move, though. Actually, we have this one. It's right. It's the new one. I'm, I'm sorry. It would need a good physical Ghost move. Um, we'll go back in a second, but like. You know, they already shafted some of the ghosts by not giving them Poltergeist. So then again, Dragapult and Mimikyu probably might have been pretty busted with Poltergeist. Like, even Mimikyu might have actually been pretty busted with Poltergeist just because it has a free turn. And Dragapult for sure, in a Dynamax metagame. And Dragapult for sure would have been busted with Poltergeist. It already can do a lot with Dragon Dance, Dragon Darts, and even Choice Band sets. But, uh, this is a new move, Bitter Blade. Bitter Blade is a fire-type physical move that gathers the lingering regrets of the Fallen into Surreligious Sword, allowing it to focus that bitterness into a slashing attack. This sword absorbs life energy from wounds they made, and the user's HP is restored by up to half the damage taken. It's a freaking leech life, a, bu a buffed leaf life, a leech life. Amazing. Actually amazing. Actually amazing. It is such a good move. Uh, fire, like I said, is, is a good offensive typing. So like even let's say Fizz Death Lanterns comes in on it, right? It gets off the Intimidate. Um, I took Stealth Rock damage, right? Because I'm Choice Band. I get that back after I hit it with the, with the, with the Bitter Blade, right? So pretty cool. Uh, again, uh, Fire Ghost is better offensively than Fire Psychic just because it has more opportunities to do things. Uh, just having that Ghost, that immunity, for instance. Um, and Ghost is just a good stab, whereas Psychic is a decent stab, but not as much so because of the onslaught uh, of resistances. Uh, mainly Dark, right? And Steel. Whereas Ghost is just, they make Ghost broken. <laughs> they think, uh, only Dark resists Ghost, right? So, and Normal is immune. But, uh, I guess you could say the same thing about... No, no, you can't say the same thing as a Psychic. Steel is a huge one to resist it. Uh, whereas, that, obviously, they made it so that Ghost no longer... Uh, Steel no longer resists Ghost, which was a crazy change they made. But, yeah, so this is insane. But that, I think that was because of Age Slash. They didn't want to make it broken, and they wanted Bishart to be able to deal with it, personally. But uh, that's also the dark one, too. But yeah, this is pretty insane. I love Fire and Ghost offensively. We've seen what Bacephalon could do with a Choice Scarf. We've seen what we could do with a Choice Specs. We've seen what we could do with Combine. We see Chandler in lower tiers and also in, in other generations. What it can do as well. Pretty nasty with Choice Specs. Very similar. Fire Ghost Physical is really nice. Because uh, Tiflosion is also special. Uh, Fire Ghost Physical is really sick. I love this. I love the ability. I, I just like this because, again, the the the, draw, the drawback of putting a choice band on a fire Pokemon is that you're taking 25% from Stealth Rock. But if I can put that choice band on, take Stealth Rock, go for Bitter Blade, even on Resistance coming in, right? Like a Water type or, or something coming in, and I get that HP back to give me more switches later, awesome. 
absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm assuming this move is going to be either something more like Leech Life, like 80 base power, the new Leech Life, or it'll be like 100, 120, like the other one, and it'll be like 8 PP type of thing. But I feel like that's too much on uh, a move that gives you half of the damage that was taken. I think that's way too much. So I think it'll be uh, a little bit weaker than the other move, the Close Combat move. But uh, it'll be a, a still a great move overall. So I like it a lot. Hopefully it gets a good physical ghost move. I can definitely see something like I said, Swords Dance, Shadow Sneak. I think it says it's not above being sneaky. So I do expect something like Shadow Sneak to be there. Uh, swords Dance for sure. It's arms are... It has sword arms, right? It's going to get Swords Dance. I, I feel like that's no denying that. Bitter Blade. And then whatever physical ghost type attack that can go alongside that. Uh, Poltergeist obviously is the dream for any physical ghost, right? Poltergeist is the dream because that is the strong as hell move that, you know, very little drawback besides it being able to miss or the opponent not having an item. But uh, if not, we'll see. We definitely don't want a Shadow Claw. Maybe we'll get a new physical ghost move with, for Sword, like specifically for this type of Pokemon. But I mean, we have Bitter Blade already, so I'm, I'm kind of like not really holding out on that but what do you guys think about the new pokemon i think they're sick i love the way they look the cloth is really cool uh another thing pokemon now has auto battler it's uh, or auto battles it's not exactly the way you think but it, it, it's pretty similar pretty similar to like auto battles in other games but you can have one pokemon out and walking with you in the pouty is region great outdoors when you have a pokemon exploring with you in the field you can use the let's go <gasps> Let's go, Joe, to confirm. Feature to send that Pokemon off in directions you indicate. The Pokemon you send out then independently picks up items in the area and even has auto battles with nearby Pokemon. Love this, by the way. Pretty cool. Sometimes I am playing the Pokemon game and I don't want to explore everything because I have like a certain goal in mind. For instance, like, oh, I want to make it to the next badge because I want to get the badge already before I go to bed type of thing, right? Like this is realistically how I play games. Uh, so I can say, like, oh, shoot, there's an item way over there, but I don't want to go bike and run to it. Go. Fue Coco, go ahead and pick that up. I'm going to go keep going this way, but go pick up that master ball that someone dropped and left it over there type of thing, right? So I feel like this is a really cool option. The auto battle thing is pretty cool too for experience. So what are auto battles? Auto battles are a new way of battling that can be activated by using the Let's Go feature. Doing so will send out a Pokemon to battle wild Pokemon without needing orders from its trainer. I'm assuming its HP is going to matter and stuff like that, but be pretty cool. Uh, your Pokemon can be sent into an auto battle against any wild Pokemon you see in the field and even find Pokemon to engage in auto battles on its own. When your Pokemon is out and engaging in auto battles, you can do what you want. Stay by its side to watch over it or try looking for items nearby. By defeating wild Pokemon in auto battles, your Pokemon can also earn items and experience points. That's the big thing, right? Uh, so the training is annoying, honestly. Uh, I know a lot of people are like, yo, man, I can't turn off the experience share. I hate that. A lot of RPGs just have that automatically built in. Pokemon is catching up. Uh, Master using this feature to explore every nook and cranny on the vast pouty region with your Pokemon. I like this feature a lot. I can just be exploring, doing whatever I want, let my Pokemon level up. Maybe I am... I, I, I don't know about eggs in this game, but... Hatching an egg is something that came to mind, right? Um, I, I don't know... Like I said, I don't really remember about eggs in this game, what they said, or anything. But uh, maybe I have a task at end and I gotta do something. Um... Or I'm, like I said, I'm trying to go to another town, but I want to level up my way on there, but I don't want to just... You know, it's annoying running into... like The example I can think of is going into a cave and you got to fight Zubats, right? Like, I'm, you want to use repels because you don't want to fight Zubat every two steps, but at the same time, you need your Pokemon to level up to get to the next gym. But you get just so bored of fighting Zubats. So auto battle, I think, is a pretty cool feature for that, letting you uh, level up your minds fine items. I just think it's it's nice. I, I love it. It's a good addition. I don't think it's a bad addition. And it's optional, which I think is pretty cool too. I think optional. I talked about the experience thing not being optional, though again, most RPGs have that. Uh, but I like that this is optional. You're giving me options to either make the game easier for me or um, or not, if I, if I choose not to. So I really, 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 really like that. And plus, obviously, the little item will pop up and let you know, as you see right here. So, really cool. Let me know your thoughts on that. The last one, kind of an information dump. So, remember how in the one of the original trailers, they told us how there's like three different stories or three different projects you could do in the game. Uh, the regular gems, uh, treasure hunt, which they say right here, and something else with school. Or something like that. Maybe this is school. The school that you've enrolled in hosts a special independent study project. The theme of this assignment is a treasure hunt. Explore the world and seek out your very own treasure. Three stories will be one to your adventure while tra uh, traversing the sprawling pouty region. Yeah, so see, 
Along Victory Road, you will go to the gyms in different locations. Yep. Champion rank. On the Path of Legends, you can uh, join Arvin in search of rare ingredients. And in Starfall Street, you'll challenge Team Star, a group of delinquents causing trouble for the school. These stories are set in an open world, so where you go is all up to you. A world team of Pokemon and uh, people uh, to desire. Maybe it'll be waiting for you. Traverse the Paladin region wherever you want. So Victory Road, your path to champion rank. This is, you know, this, this is going to be my go my first one. I'm, I'm, obviously, I want to get all the badges, right? There are eight Pokemon badges. Yep. Different locations. You get the champion assessment. They earn the coveted champion rank. After accepting the Mona's suggestion to become a champion rank trainer, you too will be able to visit the eight Pokemon gyms scattered across the region. The first trial of the gyms. So trials are back. Uh, like just like, uh, like I think trials and also totem Pokemon are back as well. Or they call them Titans in this game or something. We'll get to that in a second. But trials are back. I, I, I didn't really care for trials versus what I have to do. I, I think trials are basically the same thing as just regular gyms, right? What's the difference between a trial and having to find the Rattata and also me doing Ice Path? I think they're the exact same thing personally. But if you like the fact that they're trials, there you go. At a Pokemon gym, you must first pass a gym test before you are allowed to challenge the gym leader. The contestants of the uh, contents of the gym test are unique to each gym, but through them, you might come to learn more about the customs and unique features of each city and town as well as what people, what kind of people that gym leaders have. So we have uh, Gita, the chairwoman of the Pokemon League. Gita is the chairwoman of the Pokemon League, which operates Paladin's Pokemon Gyms. Among the region's champions, she reigns... I actually haven't read any of this, so this is why we're kind of reading it. She reigns supreme with the most skilled trainer of all. Ooh. She reigns supreme. So she's a chairwoman, and she's... I mean, it sounds like she is the champion as well. I like her fit. Looks sick. Though mild-mannered, Gita still has a commanding presence, and it's said that anyone who calls himself a Pokemon trainer looks up to her. It appears that she is looking for exceptional young talents capable of conquering the Pokemon League. Uh, racist gym leader of Artisan Town. Racist is a gym leader of Artisan Town, a town that alive with flowers and art, so it's a grass-type gym leader, which is pretty cool. Um, piece de resistance. Surrendering some flora is a statue installation depicting adorable so far with somber expressions. Just what these some are running to is a topic of debate against the connoisseurs. Now, I thought this was really cool. Uh, we had been said before, I think we read somewhere before, that the gym leaders aren't going to be only have typings unique to what their gym is, right? So this guy is a Sudowoodo. And it's really cool. Well, first off, Sudowoodo looks like it has a new move in the trailer. Trailblaze, uh, Trailblaze I believe it's called. And it was super effective on water types. So I'm assuming it's a grass type attack. I mean, it already had wood hammer and, and you know, rock head. So that was probably the only grass move you need. But this is pretty cool during the battle anyway. Uh, the cool part about this is that it used the uh, terrestrializing phenomenon. or terrestri It terrestrialized the, the Sudowoodo to become grass type in the trailer. So I think I think this is really unique because Sudowoodo is a really interesting pick for a grass type gym leader. Because I'm picking Fue Coco, right? I'll, I'll, that's, the, that's the start I'm picking. I'm rolling up in there. I'm clicking Ember three times and I'm winning. But this dude has a Sudowoodo. So if he doesn't opt to terrestrialize Sudowoodo, it will stay a rock type. It will resist my Ember and it can threaten me with a rock throw or a rock slide or whatever it learns at whatever level this guy has. I'm assuming rock throw would be its rock move. But I think that's a really cool option to make the game harder. As long as the trainer does not terrestrialize or the gym leader doesn't terrestrialize in, in front of a... A Pokemon that it naturally resists, I think it's pretty pretty cool. Because then obviously if it becomes a grass type immediately, I'm just gonna hit with Ember, it'll be super effective. So <clears throat> really cool. Search for Herba Mystica on the path of legends. Arva's research into healthy recipes for Pokemon has led him to seek out rare ingredients called Herba uh, Herba Mystica, which are said to immediately restore health once eaten. Oh, it's like a max potion or four star. They're extremely rare herbs that can only be found in Paladia. They are guarded by Titan Pokemon, which is which is basically similar to totem Pokemon, uh, which are bigger and stronger than ordinary Pokemon, making these rare herbs even more difficult to tame. What's more, a number of these Titan Pokemon have already been sighted in the region. Since Arvin isn't good at Pokemon battles, he'll be asking you to help him out, and will even offer to treat you to some of his handmade dishes if two of you succeed in obtaining these rare herbs. Drive back to opponents and gather the Herba Mystica uh, together with Arvin, or Herba Mystica could be it too. Okay, face off against the school's troublemakers in the Star of Wall Street. So first off, without even saying anything, this is obviously a Pokemon, right? I'm not saying the whole damn truck that they're on is a Pokemon, but this is very obviously a Pokemon. Like, first off, we see a tongue. We see an eye. We see a mouth. Uh, it looks like it's a spider Pokemon. It looks like it's steel type because it's on this and probably poison. Like, if you can't see that, they didn't reveal it officially yet, but it's it's a it's obviously a Pokemon. 
right? And it looks like it's spider Pokemon on top of the trunk. Like, literally looks in front, pretending to be an engine or looking cool. It's definitely a freaking Pokemon, okay? I think it's a Pokemon, for sure. So, I'm excited about that, especially because, like I said, it looks poison and steel, which I love that timing. We don't have that. Team Star was formed by school's most rebellious students and is made up of several squads. Freaking school kids. Each squad is why. <laughs> Each squad, never mind. This is why led by its own boss. Each will have their own base scattered across the powdery region. These glass. Oh, I thought these glass cutting. Damn. These glass cutting delinquents cause trouble for all those around them, giving the academy students and teachers a hard time of disturbing the peace and using pushy recruitment tactics. So this is basically gangs. Watch up to their bases and face off against the troublemaking team star. Do they go back to school if I beat them? Is that how that works? Yeah, because I mean, they're all wearing school outfits. You know, honestly. I don't like the guy's outfit in this, but he's rocking it. The capris with the with the tie with the uh, the the shirt button undone. He's out to get rid of the helmet. Honestly, he's rock. I, I'd freaking go to school like this. I would. I would. He's rocking that dude. Straight up. Make your way to Team Star's bases, take down their bosses. When you go take on each squad boss, Team Star's many grunts will send out a relentless barrage of Pokemon to get in your way. By defeating enough of the grunts Pokemon within a given time limit, you'll be able to challenge your boss to a battle. Ooh, so you're actually timed. Engage in auto battles, a like convenient feature that's new to the titles to overcome the unending barrage of Team Star grunts and their Pokemon. So I can literally do auto battles, let my Pokemon go battle and just keep going? That's funny. Note, the uniform is worn by the members of Team Star will differ depending on the versions of the game you play. This is a freaking 100% of Pokemon, man. Once you overcome the waves of Team Grunts, the boss will appear in a custom car called the Star Mobile. It takes. It seems that during your Pokemon battles with these bosses, the Star Mobile itself will get in your way. Take down each squad's boss by defeating their party Pokemon and their Star Mobiles. Mela boss of the... Uh, Sheeter? She, uh, I don't know how to say that. Skater? Skater squad? Sh I, uh, school? Skater? Yeah. AKA, that sounds like in C uh, the CH makes not... Sh sound or whatever okay team stars fire crew love her freaking boots dude look at these high rise super high rise boots they look sick someone's gonna look sick in this cosplay uh bella is the boss of team uh stars fire crew as the team's best all-arounder Ooh, Mella fixes any of any problem thrown her way through her methods are heavy-handed she leaves a forceful and gruff impression but her steadfast devotion to completing anything she puts her mind to has earned her the trust of her teammates. Now, the uniforms worn by the members will differ depending on the versions. Yes, yes, yes. So she has a Torkoal. Cool. Uh, overall, uh, like I said, this is 100% a Pokemon. Um, I like the fact that the biker gang type of thing, which is really funny. The damn truck. Titans, uh, so Totem Pokemon basically back. Um, this was probably really unique. Like, was one of the coolest things with that. Uh, and I don't think, honestly, that's it. Like, Pretty cool. I think I like that they're doing something different, giving us more options in the story. Uh, I had wished that the game had. I think this would be pretty cool. If they had like the levels, obviously, depending on where you go, because I know you can challenge the gyms in any order. So if I could have actually, you know, decided to take on Gym Eight and Gym Eight had level ten Pokemon because it was t treating it as Gym One, I think that would have been better personally. But overall, pretty exciting. I'm excited about the Pokemon guys. What are your thoughts on the trailer? Uh, let me know down below leave a like subscribe as well i got a lot more pokemon stuff coming these guys look sick man and like i said if you want to pick up anything from best buy or you want to pick up the pokemon games feel free to support me uh, those links are down below target best buy you support me anything peace guys